Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. This is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. First, Merry Christmas Eve. Um, uh, joyous Festivus, if you celebrate that. Happy Hanukkah. Boxing Day. Uh, you know, whatever, whatever festivity. Uh, it is the season, and uh, I want to. I want to um, uh, wish you all a very happy holidays and Merry Christmas, to no matter what you celebrate. Um, now tonight, I want to talk about. Some people can put together an idea and link together concepts brilliantly. And they take a, a premise or an idea and they can bring it to fruition. And, and in the end, they have a brilliant, uh, um, like a brilliant, what's the word I'm looking for? A, a brilliant uh, reason why something may correlate to something else. I, however, am not that person. <laughs> Usually my ideas go together like uh, toothpaste and orange juice or they go together like uh, chocolate and ranch dressing uh, and this may be one of those nights where I put together something that doesn't make that really doesn't have anything to do with each other but I think it does and I wanted to talk about both these topics and and one kind of made me think of the other one so when I was in uh, Germany I went to Berlin and I when I was in Poland I went to Auschwitz and some of the other camps and a big a Something that sat with me for the longest time is how could people do something like this to their fellow man when they're just average, ordinary citizens? And upon further research, when I got back here to the United States and I read some more into it, well, it turns out Milgram's experiments and the perils of obedience. Well, Milgram, it was a, I think he was a Yale professor in the 1960s that did this experiment that that tested to see how many people would do something that would harm their fellow man because they were told to do so by someone that was an authority figure. Now, I've put together a little video clip, a little montage from both the original experiment and the recreation. I will leave links down below. I'm going to play this video for you. Then I'm going to read the article. And then depending on how hard YouTube is on me about showing this video, then you'll either hear me read the article or you'll watch the video and then we'll discuss it. So let, I'm going to jump right into that. And then we're going to discuss what this has to do with with OnlyFans and, and dating and 2021. So let me get recording on this and we'll get right into it. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to read through this because uh, YouTube didn't let me play the video. They kept marking it for uh, copyright infringement. I'm going to read straight through the, the article that I have here. And then we're going to discuss it because I think this tells us a lot about kind of the thought process that a lot of people are going through today. But I want to get the experiment out there so you understand the implications of the experiment. And then I'm going to talk about how this correlates to kind of today's society. So the article is named Milgram's Experiments and the Perils of uh, Obedience. It says, if an, if, an, uh, <laughs> if an authority figure ordered you to deliver a 400 volt electrical shock to another person would you follow orders most people would answer with an adamant no however the milgram obedience experiment aimed to prove otherwise during the 1960s yale university psychologist stanley milgram conducted a series of obedience experiments that led to some surprising results these results offer a compelling and disturbing look at the power of authority and obedience more recent investigations cast doubt on some of the implications of Milgram's findings and even question the results and procedures themselves. Despite its problem, the study has, without question, significantly, significantly impacted psychology. What were the Milgram experience? Uh, experiments? Excuse me. The social psychology of the century reveals a major lesson. Often, it is not so much the kind of person a man is at the end of the situation in which he finds himself that determines how he will act. Milgram stated, started his experiments in 1961, shortly after the trial of WW2, a criminal Adolf Eich, uh, Eichmann had begun. Eichmann's defense was he was merely following instructions when he, was, when he ordered the ending of millions of Jews roused, 
roused Milgram's interest. In his 1974 book, Obedience to Authority, Milgram posed the question, could it be that Eichmann and his millions, uh, and his million accomplices in the uh, in WW2 were just the following, just following orders? Could we call them all accomplices? So, and this is uh, what I find so fascinating about this study is, is like I said, uh, when I went to to Germany and visited Berlin, and when I vid visited some of the camps in Poland, what surprised me so much is here you had a, a country that was literally turning on its neighbors, turning in its neighbors, tattletaling on its neighbors to the government. They were um, uh, forced to stand outside of their store with Judah on their, on a billboard, anybody that supported a store that was owned by someone that was Jewish. And you had, you had basically half of the country going after the, after the other country. Kind of sounds familiar right now in a lot of our, our politics right now, doesn't it? But it also has to do with, sounds kind of same how right now women and the feminists and news media and Hollywood and how a lot of, of uh, kind of the more the left and the, and the girl power movement are coming after men. You've got half the population attacking the other half. And really, uh, there's almost no need for it. But uh, again, it, it's still happening. So what they looked at in this experiment is, is this because people were told to do it and they felt that they were they were doing or following what authoritative figures were telling them to do or were they bad people? Well, they can continue on. An experiment of shocking proportions. The participants in the most famous variation of the Milgram experiment were 40 men recruited using newspaper ads. In exchange for their participation, each person was paid $4.50. Uh, now, they, they have recreated this experiment several times, and they have included women in the more modern um, application of the experiment or the redoing the experiment and the results were essentially the same so it doesn't matter if it's men, male participants or female participants the numbers came out almost exactly the same Milgram developed an intimidating shock generator with shock levels starting at 30 volts and increasing in 15 volt increments all the way up to 450 volts the many switches were labeled with terms including slight shock moderate shock and danger, severe shock. The final two switches were labeled simply with an ominous XXX. Each participant took the role of a teacher who would then deliver a shock to the, quote, student whenever an incorrect answer was given. When the participant, while the participant believed that he was delivering real shocks to a real student, the student was in fact a uh, uh, in on the experiment and it was simply an actor simply pretending to be shocked. As the experiment progressed, the participant would hear the, learn, uh, the learner plead to be released or even complain about a heart condition. Once they reached the 300 volt level, the learner would bang on the wall and demand to be released. Beyond this point, the learner became completely silent and refused to answer any more questions. The experimenter then instructed the participant to treat this silence as an incorrect response and deliver further shock. Most participants asked the experimenter whether they should continue. The experimenter issued a series of commands to prod the participant along, such as, please continue. The experiment requires that you continue. It is absolutely essential that you continue. You have no other choice. You must go on. Did the majority deliver the maximum shock? The measure of obedience was the level of shock that the participant was willing to deliver. How far do you, th do you think most participants were willing to go? When Milgram posed this question to a group of Yale University students, it was predicted that no more than three out of 100 participants would deliver the maximum shock, so 3%. In reality, 65% of the participants in Milgram's study delivered the maximum shocks a majority of people were willing to possibly permanently hurt somebody because they were simply told to do so. Of the 40 participants in the study, 26 delivered the maximum shocks, while 14 stopped before reaching the highest levels. It is important to note that many of the subjects became extremely agitated, distraught, and angry at the experimenter, but they continued to follow orders all the way to the end. Due to the concerns about the amount of anxiety experienced by many of the participants, everybody was debriefed at the end of the experiment. The researchers explained the procedures and the use of the deception.
However, many critics of the study have argued that many of the participants were still confused about the exact nature of the experiment. Milgram later surveyed the participants and found that 84% were glad to have participated while only 1% regretted their involvement. So they were glad to know the, the psychology behind it. Now this has been repeated and again, every time it's been over 55% or excuse me, it'd be over 50% between 55 and I think one study was as high as almost 70%. So a majority of people, because they were instructed to do so by a seeming, seemingly a professional, were willing to shock somebody, even once they were complaining of heart problems, once they became completely silent, once they were screaming in pain. They continued on simply because they were told so. And this, I think, explains a lot of how um, you can see well, I'll get into that theory in a second. Uh, I was going to go down another path, but you can see that that during WW two, when Germans were were um, hurting other citizens and turning in other citizens, or even currently, where you've got neighbors turning in other neighbors and calling the police because they have more than the recommended number of people over at their house, or that they someone's not uh, uh, properly distancing, or someone's not wearing a face covering, they're turning in their own neighbors. Why? Because they've been told by authorities that you must, and this supersedes their like of the other person, or how they feel about the other person, whether right or wrong. The point is they're willing to help the state go against their fellow man. We see the same thing happening right now with police. A lot of police officers in large cities are targeting individuals and doing very unconstitutional things, even though that it's been proven that it's in, against the law. Even in some areas, there have been court cases that have been filed and have the police have been told uh, that you need to stand down because this is unconstitutional. When the mayor tells these police to still do it, they still do. Because again, someone of higher authority is telling them to do something and they're going against their own training and their own uh, good good uh, or their, their own best uh, best intentions to go ahead and do this to their fellow man. Again, because someone in authority is telling them. And of course, in, in the case of the police, they also have the threat of losing their job. And right now, would they be able to get another job and provide for their families? They're some of the luckiest uh, um, amongst us that uh, haven't had any, any job loss. Although interesting, uh, the police are the same ones that are calling out, uh, people are calling out for the police to be defunded. And yet they're still helping the people that are calling out for the defunding of the police, interestingly enough. Anyway, the moral questions Milgram raised. While Milgram research raised serious ethical questions about the use of human subjects in psychology experiments, his results have been constantly replicated in further experiments. Thomas Blass in 1999 uh, reviewed further research on obedience and found that Milgram's findings hold true in other experiments. Why did so many of the participants in this experiment perform a seemingly sadistic act when instructed by an authority figure? According to Milgram, there are some situational factors that can, can explain such high levels of obedience. The physical presence of an authority figure dramatically increased compliance. The fact that Yale, a trusted and authoritative uh, academic institution, sponsored the study led by many participants to believe the experiment must be safe. The selection of teacher and learner status seemed random. It really wasn't. Again, it, 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 the uh, the whoever was the teacher, the one that was buzzing people, um, the student was always an actor, but they made it seem like it was random. Participants assumed that the experimenter was a competent expert. The shocks were said to be painful, not dangerous, even though on the board it was labeled triple X and the um, the quote student was complaining of heart problems and com uh, complaining about pain and then later went silent. They say later experiments conducted by Milgram indicated that the presence of rebellious peers dramatically reduced obedience levels. When other people refused to go along with the experiment's orders, 36 out of 40 participants refused to deliver the maximum shocks. So as soon as somebody else stood up and said, no, no more, it gave other people the comfort level or the uh, confidence to say no as well. Ordinary people simply doing their jobs and without any particular hostility on their part can become agents in a terrible destructive process. 
Moreover, even when the destructive effects of their work becomes patently clear and they're asked to carry out actions incompatible with fundamental standards of morality, relatively few people have the resources needed to resist authority. Milgram explained in Obedience and Authority. Milgram's experiment has become classic in psychology, demonstrating the dangers of obedience. The research suggests that situational variables have a stronger sway than personality factors in determining obedience. However, other psychologists argue that both external and internal factors heavily influence obedience, such as personal beliefs and overall temperament. temperament. So they researchers replicate Milgram. Would, st would people still obey? In 2009, researchers conducted a study designed to replicate Milgram's classic obedience experiment. In an article published in the APS Observer, psychologist Jerry Berger of Santa Clara University and author of the study described how relevant Milgram's study is today. The haunting black and white images of ordinary citizens delivering what appeared to be dangerous, if not deadly, electric shocks and the implications of the findings for atrocities like the... the like what happened during WW2, uh, are not easily dismissed. Yet because Milgram's procedures are clearly out of bounds by today's ethical standards, many questions about uh, the research have gone unanswered. Chief among these is, would, is one that inevitably surfaces when I present Milgram's finding to students. Would people still act that way today? Berger made several alt alterations to Milgram's experiments. The maximum shock level was 150 volts as opposed to the original 450. Participants were also carefully screened to eliminate those who might experience adverse reactions to the experiment. In other words, looking for people that might be triggered. However, the results of the new experiments revealed that the participants obeyed at the same rate they did when Milgram conducted his original study more, more than 40 years ago. The January 2009 issue of American Psychologists also contained discussion from other psychologists about the possible comparisons between Milgram's experiment and Berger's study. And I won't read the rest of this because we're almost at the end of it, but um, basically, and there's another one on YouTube, I've got a couple links down below, that are, again, more modern variants of this, and in all cases, more than 55%. The study remains the same. So what does this have to do with society? Why things are going to get worse in 2021? Not only on the dating front, but for men, for society as a whole. Right now, you have leading authors, whether it's on, um, whether it's on uh, news, news sites, CBS, NBC, The New York Times, Yale, a lot of the studies that are coming out of universities, are stating that women are superior to men or that if a study comes out that puts down women or is critical of women, it is also critiqued and thrown out by the scientific community. However, anything that props up women and puts them in a good light is allowed through. What this means is you're going to have a bias coming through to where, again, the perception is women are great and wonderful, men are bad and awful. And these are coming from pr prestigious you know, places or what, what some consider prestigious. The New York Times now basically has ruined any chance of any credibility. However, a lot of people still look at them as the paper of record, you know, the, the gray old lady. Um, many people see these studies coming out of universities and take them for rote. I've done some, some articles on studies coming out of universities, and a lot of you guys call it bunk, and, and I get that, and, and that's fair enough. But when you've got these authoritative figures coming out saying men bad, women good. Again, people tend to believe that. And then what about, uh, and, and I've got something to tie in here a little bit more, but let's talk about OnlyFans. Let's talk about these women that are becoming more and more snooty and harder to date. They have higher expectations of men, unrealistic expectations of men. And now women are going to, flocking to OnlyFans and, um, and, and doing this as a, a job opportunity. Well, they're cheered on. You know, it's now a bad word to say housewife or that when you get older, I would like to just be a good wife to my husband and raise a family. Those are no-no words now, according to many on the left and, and what's pervasive on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and all this other stuff is it's supposed to be a strong, proud woman, women great. Uh, you can do whatever you want to do. You deserve the best. And again, these are, are coming out from every source uh, of media, academia, and so on and so forth, because they're very much on the left, you see. 
So this is coming out and this is going to continue to proliferate uh, through society. Then you take something like this. I have, let me uh, bring up this article here. You have this article here. Belle Delphine says she makes a million a month through OnlyFans. Now, Belle Delphine is 19 years old. I believe she's 19 now. She got popular on Instagram. She sold her bath water for $30 a container. Um, speaking to pa Logan Paul on his uh, impulsive, hmm, cute. Speaking to Paul Logan or Logan Paul on his impulsive podcast, Bell, whose real name is Barry Bell Kirshner, revealed the hefty amount of cash she pulls in each month for posting her not suitable for work content. Her OnlyFans account is $35 or 26 pounds a month, putting her at the higher end, not the highest, the higher end of content creators on the site. Although she wouldn't reveal how many subscribers she has, she did admit all like the main people on OnlyFans are roughly earning the same, I think, from what I know. And at the moment, it's like a mil a month. So a million dollars. Now, in a recent interview with a uh, spectator, Bell said she makes about 1.2 million U.S. dollars or 900,000 pounds a month. And she said she said she could be set to have an even bigger payday now that she plans to release her first ever spicy adult stuff on Christmas Day tomorrow. So we've got a society that that is is saying women good, women powerful, women um, entitled, get the best, do the best, you deserve the best. And then you've got women seeing things like this, like Bell and other entertainers um, making millions millions a month and then you've got the girl next door that's some of them are clearing 500 to a thousand two thousand dollars a month just because and there's no one frowning on this anymore there is maybe some conservatives and but again they are not the major media most of the media is left-leaning so a lot of the conservatives their voices aren't being heard so you've got women cheering this on you've got society cheering this on you go girl you know, spicy work is real work. Uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez said the same thing in a tweet. They're trying to put bills forward that this kind of work can go through. And and if this becomes legalized, that's fine. I've got to trim my mustache. It is tickling my nose. So those of you watching me and see me constantly rubbing my nose, I apologize. I'm overdue for a trim. Um, I promise I don't have a habit. Um but but again, this is being cheered on. And, and if it is the way it's going, it's fine. But this is not going to make society any better. Things are just going to get worse. Soon, having a girlfriend basically means uh, there's a very good chance that she is, is, was, or will be on OnlyFans. On top of that, um, the work that they're doing is not just doing things without clothing on. Uh, because I have another article here. Uh, what's more popular on OnlyFans than not being dressed? intimacy and uh, they go through here and talk about it but basically it's not now it's not just about uh, having risque pictures it's about actually um, showing the young entertainer the female entertainer and a male participant or another female participant actually doing the deed on video and, and selling that video online and when when young people hear millions of dollars by Bell and they look in the mirror and they say, I'm as cute as Bell Delphine, or I think I can do well at this, they're gonna, whether it's a boyfriend or a stranger or multiple guys or whatever, it's now not just having a partner, it's now doing it on video and selling it. it, it this is not good. To add on to this, over the last four years, we have seen Trump supporters, and, and this doesn't matter whether you're a Trump supporter or you hate the guy. That's not the point. But we've seen Trump supporters get beaten up. We've seen Trump supporters get ended um, in the streets during violence. And every time they were labeled as far right, as bad, as, as evil, as toxic by the news media. But then we have 100 days of protests in Portland and other areas. And while a burning uh, building is burning in the background, the news reporter says, because it's, it's um, you know, not only the uh, Antifa, but uh, the Bravo Lima Mike, uh, that group, they'll say mostly peaceful as the city's burning down behind them. So there's, there's definitely a bias here. And so the, then, and, and I was reading on, on Twitter just the other day, there's a news reporter for like CNN or one of the big saying, uh, anybody that supported Trump needs to go to re-education camps. They need to be rounded up. 
This is the kind of same language that was used uh, back in the 1940s in Germany. We've got a very definitive split and the ones with the loudest voices are the authoritative figures, which are again, colleges, universities, um, professors now, your news media, you've got politicians on both sides, but you've got politicians coming out calling for these problems. The split is only going to get wider. It's going to get worse. And, and it's going to be worse between men and women. It's going to be worse between uh, those that are trying to date. It's going to be worse uh, between political factions. This is all just going to get worse. It's all just ramping up. So I think we've got some, some rough times coming ahead. And I think Milgram's experiment shows why. Because we've got authoritative figures and people on, on in positions of somewhat uh, perceived authoritative positions telling everybody what to do and this is okay and it's okay to beat them up because they're a Trump supporter or uh, they are a Remainer versus a, a Brexit uh, or whatever. That You've got groups now giving you permission to go ahead and, and behave poorly, whether it's woman versus man, whether it's a Democrat versus Republican or whatever. So I think we've got more strife. And for those that say, well, I don't think it's going to get that bad, Look at what happened in these experiments. You've got people willing to possibly give someone a, a an ending dose of voltage because someone told them to. Now, do you think that they're not going to be okay with putting up some spicy pictures? Well, society tells them it's okay. Get your you know get your money's worth. And do you think it's going to be any easier to date when women are told, "Hey, you deserve the very best man, and don't settle for anything less." Do you think there's not going to be more political strife when you have? Uh, those in the media saying, well, uh, you know, this was a peaceful protest because it was pro this party, but those people that did the same thing one or two times or the people that are protesting about wanting to keep their businesses open or something like that, well, they're the bad guys and, and we need to end this. this. This split is going to continue. So how do we, what do we do about this? Number one, we have to become uh, educated. And I apologize for the white noise in the background, by the way. I'm in a bus and it is pouring rain out. So I'm kind of like in a tin can. So if you hear a little white noise in the background, I apologize. Uh, what do we do to correct this? Number one, invest well, save your money, try to get that scratch for a rainy day. You know, um, all of us, if, if you're lucky enough and, and employment's still doing well for you, uh, try to save that money. If you're unemployed, you know, if you go out there and you try to get a new job or you're changing jobs and the next job starts teaching you some of this woke BS or uh, that everything's systemic and everything is patriarchy. And you have to be in a place where you can walk away from that job. Because if you take the job and say, well, I have to put up with it, what you're telling is uh, telling people is that you're okay with, with their message. Same thing when you're on social media, or whether, it's, whether it's men, women, whoever. If you're not okay with a message, it's no longer time to be quiet about this stuff. You have to speak up. And say, hey, if you're only on OnlyFans, I'm not interested in dating you, or you're you're ineligible. Well, people start having to stand up with this, and just like in the experiments, the more people that stand up, because if you're a man on an island alone and you stand up alone and say, no, I'm not going to work for a company that's like this, and you walk away. If you're the only per, or you say, I'm not going to date anybody that's not been on OnlyFans, and you walk away. If you're the only person doing this, no one will care. But if, if more and more men come forward and say, oh, you're on OnlyFans, I'm not interested in you. You're undateable to me. If more men come up and say, oh, you've got this weird, um, you know, intersectional whatever going on with, with this or you're on the girl power movement, I'm not interested in this job or I'm not interested in participating in this event. The more people that start walking away from this, other people will see, hey, I'm not alone in this. It's okay for me to do so. And they will do it too. It's it's the 2021 is going to be the year of choosing sides. I really believe that you're you're there's many of us like myself that I try to, you know, I vote and, and I make my feelings known about certain things, but I do not want to ostracize anyone here. So I don't talk about this stuff very often, but I think there's going to be a time that, that probably in this next year where people are going to have to stand up and say, I've chosen a side and either I choose uh, the side that's going to be this way or the side that's going to be this way. I choose the side that's going to call women out for bad behavior and that if you're on OnlyFans, I don't want to date you. And if you have attitude on your dating profile, I'm not even going to swipe on you. Uh, you have to be on that side or you have to be on the side of uh, men are, are bad 
women good and continue on down that path. I think people are going to have to pick up sides. So things are going to be, but I think Calhoun's, or Calhoun, I think um, Milgram's experiment shows this because, again, it's going to take a group of people standing up because if they don't, they will keep going up until the point of ending somebody um, theoretically. Uh, now it is time for the dating profile of the day. All right, I don't have a photo for this one, nor an age, but this is one that I found. It uh, This young lady lives uh, happens to live in Charlotte. But anyway, it says, Only men with ambitious personalities need apply. Three men have already failed. The first to earn all the digits in my phone number can take me on a date. That's right. The first to earn all the digits on my phone number can take me on a date. No Snap, no Instagram. You'll earn the numbers one by one through clues. I'm feeling generous. The first digit of my phone number is the amount of men that have already failed this challenge. If we match, I'll give you a clue to find the second digit. XOXO kisses Lauren. Lauren, forget about it. No way. This is the kind of attitude that men are talking about um, where talk about entitled. I don't care if you're a supermodel. I don't care if you. This is the kind of thing that men need to tap out on and get away from. This kind of attitude. This is what I think is going to continue on in 2021. And this is uh, you're going to have to start picking sides. I think. What a hot mess. I mean, how insulting is that? You need to earn. You have to go through seven hoops to get seven digits of her phone number. No thanks. This uh, this woman has about as much culture as a bacterial petri dish. Let me just tell you that right now. Guys, if you'd like to support my work, links are below as always. If you have, thank you very much. Best way to support me is like, comment, share, subscribe. And I will leave it there. This is Better Bachelor. I am Joker. And remember, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. I will still be putting out a video for tomorrow, more than likely. Uh, but if I don't, I want to wish you all the happiest of holiday seasons. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Festivus, and whatever else you may, uh, may celebrate. Thank you.